Since the beginning of time, God has been pursuing mankind. His pursuit is steadfast and unwavering. His love is resolute and unmatched. From the moment of our first breath, we have all been searching for hope. In every human heart, there is a longing for true purpose and meaning. There is a sense that we were meant for more. Our city is filled with people searching for truth, searching for answers. These answers can't be found in quick fixes, self-help books, or our limited ability to understand the meaning of life. Eternity is within us. The kingdom of God isn't a place, it's a people who are pursued by their creator and are found in the midst of their searching. You see, where the pursuit of God and the searching of mankind collide, there is Jesus. Praise the Lord. As we all know, we are preaching what we teach. But what I'm preaching has been decided by the leadership. So they already <laughs> did the statement of faith. Um, uh, this is an opportunity they're giving to us uh, to share what they prepared. So they just gave the skeleton, we just filled the uh, uh, matter. So let's uh, see, at least uh, I, my prayer is that, you know, whatever they think of uh, the statement, at least I should produce that. Uh, let's pray. Prema Krupa Kankramgal Parlok Tandri, Prava. Isandrikal Samilo, Pravani Sanit Kraut and Kitchen Yoka Gop Samin Kaudanalu, Pravani Bidlmajinil Bertun Tundaga, Nisaha in Dai Chendi, Prava Nakabali Hinatani, Prava Naka, Prava Taravade Pedavani, Anitlinia Stala Petkunan, Prava Yoka Predation Lilbertanki, Nakamatra Marhat Ledani, Nikim Bidlmajup Kunan, Prava Kevalum Prava, Nyoka Krupadwara, Pravani Nikanil Bertan, Nikaha in Dai Chendi, Nisilu chat maru perchendi, prava ni korke prava, nin diring and ilpatan kalsna, sahai niman is sanidra ved kunani, sami mantatlo mirmata undendi, prava ni kasanidra makimani, ichina pradna, marakshakanes, kristam ladi ved kunan, tendi, amen. Today, what we teach is um, how many remember what we taught by Brother James last week? Jesus the Son, what is about? It's about the resurrection. <laughs> yeah. So I'll try to finish it. If not, um, you will get part two. So, so if I'm not able to finish this, uh, you will definitely get a part two version of this. Um, so don't worry about it. <laughs> so I was um, listening to one of the QA sessions. Uh, there was a great preacher. So one uh, woman went and uh, said that um, she's feeling guilty to take the communion um, in that church. She's saying, I'm feeling like um, I'm not living a right life. I'm still participating in communion. Then the preacher um, asked her, um, do you love God? She said, yes. Do you love, um, do you love to go to church? She said, yes. And uh, he asked, do you want to live a life according to the God's word? She said, I can't. I can't live according to the God's word unless God helps me. Then the great preacher said, welcome to the board. You understand what I'm saying, right? So we can't live according to the God's word unless God helps us. Don't think that, you know, preachers were is preaching, they might be saying, you know, a lot of things to follow and everything. They are also like you. You're all more better than me. That's what I'm trying to say. So let's um, get into this word. So, so we already taught um, about um, the resurrection last week. Um, our God created us for his glory. You all agree that, right? And uh, what we did is we sinned and we fall short of the glory according to Romans 3.23. God did not left us even though we left the glory of God. What he did, he sent 
his son, our Lord Jesus Christ. According to John 3.16. According to Romans 4.20, what it says is, through the faith, we can give glory to God. We lost the glory, but how can we give back to the glory? Through the faith. Faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. So we have been, last three weeks, um, we saw part one of redemption, part two of redemption, and then last week we saw resurrection. So redemption, um, we are redeemed from the sin by, yeah, you can see, by the death and burial and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. And also, last week we went to what we believe in, in the, our Lord Jesus Christ, physically risen from death, and uh, he was where he was now. That's what we are going to discuss. So he was ascended to heaven. What is ascension um, is different from resurrection, right? Um, what is resurrection? And what is ascension? Excuse my accent. <laughs> What is Praveen? Arohanam. Yeah. yeah. Ascension is like Arohanam. So, so our Lord Jesus Christ, um, he lived 40 days after his resurrection, according to um, Acts 1, 3. I'm reading according to Acts 1, chapter 1, verse 3. This is after the resurrection, our Lord Jesus Christ lived in this earth for 40 days, to whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs, being seen of them 40 days, and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. So our Lord Jesus Christ was on this earth for 40 days. After 40 days, he was ascended. This is all what we teach. That's what I want to just emphasize on that. So these most of the points um, were um, given by the leadership and um, some of them from uh, a book. Um, yeah, so ascension is a prophecy. It's already uh, David in Psalm 1101. How many knows these words? I think if someone can help me, um, I may not read so many verses were there, but um, we'll read some key verses. Thank you, sister. This is the fulfillment of this prophecy. What David said, the Lord said unto my Lord, the Lord said unto my Lord, or Lord Jesus Christ, sit thou at my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool. He ascended to heaven, but where is he now, our Lord Jesus Christ? He is at the right hand. I, I can't see whether I'll see. <laughs> Brother projector, let me try. <laughs> Still, I'll follow this one. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so where is our Lord now? According to Hebrews 1.3, um, with right hand of her, of the Father. And he's just sitting there. He had glory and he had a power and dominion. Actually, my, yeah. Yeah, is it visible to all? Oh, okay. Yeah, with power and dominion, he sat at the right hand side of the majesty on high. Right? Most of the verses we may not read it because we don't have much time. So our Lord Jesus Christ, where he is now, he's at the right hand side of the Father. We may not see, we only know that our Lord is ascended, but where he is now, he's at the right hand side of the Father. So Lord gave grace to some people like Stephen. Before he's dying, he saw where our Lord Jesus Christ is in Acts 7, 55 to 56. 
God gave ability to see our Lord Jesus Christ. What he says? He says, our Lord is standing on the right side of the Father. And what he is doing, our Lord, in the right hand side of the Father, according to Romans 8, 34, he is interceding for us. Right? About you and me. Why is interceding? Because he redeemed you and me from the sin. And he is interceding on behalf of us. So how do we go to God the Father boldly? Because of our Lord Jesus Christ. Because we know that he ascended, our Lord Jesus Christ. But where he is, he is at the right hand side. He is not sitting there. He is interceding for his own people, for his believers, for you and for me. So, if we think about what we teach about the ascension of our Lord Jesus Christ in our church is, the first point it says, we are also seated at heavenly places. Can someone read um, Ephesians 2.6? Thank you very much. So, we were... What the ancients and um, teachers uh, is, you know, we are also seated in heavenly places along with our Lord Jesus Christ. And also, we teach that our affection should be on high. The way how our Lord ascended, our eyes should always look unto our Lord Jesus Christ. If I ask Colossians, Colossians 3, 1 to 4, everyone knows it, right? What it, what's the first words? No one needs to open the Bible. Seek the things above, which are above, right? Which are above. So we have to look under above. Ascension means what we teach is, you know, we need to look for the things above. And also on 1 Corinthians 15.22, it says, we will be victorious through our Lord Jesus Christ. It says, uh, where is... Oh, death, where is thy string, right? Yeah. There is no victory uh, of death in our lives because we are victorious. The death was swallowed by the work of God. So what we teach is, you know, we will be victorious, not because of our own strength, through our Lord Jesus Christ. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, we will be victorious. And also, we will reign along with our Lord Jesus Christ. It says in Revelation 3.21, we will also reign with our Lord Jesus Christ. So, when we may not read that verse, because um, with lack of time. So, what we teach about ascension is uh, we are already seated on the heavenly places and also our affection should always look unto upward as per Colossians and also we will be victorious until the day um, our Lord Jesus comes back and also we will reign along with our, this is a hope. After ascension, what comes is consummation. Consummation, I think the pronunciation is. So consummation, um, if you see the literal meaning of a Bible meaning is, it's completion. It's the end, the perfection of word, a process, or scheme. I just um, um, pasted those. The end or completion of the present system of things. The end of the world. Death and the end of life. These are the couple of meanings. Because it took me some time to understand what is the meaning of consummation. So, so I just want to give you what is the right meaning of this. When you saw the other slide, right? Um, we lost the glory because of the faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. We are giving glory to God. But God is not silent. God will bring back his glory through the fallen people like you and me. We are the fallen people. We fall short of the glory. So using us, God will bring back the glory. In Habakkuk 2.14 it says, Earth shall be filled with 
knowledge of the glory of God. And also in Romans 8, 18, what it says, creation travails, right? For, can someone read Romans 8, 18? Yes. And in 19 also. Thank you, sister. See, the creation in this world as of now is earnestly expecting for what? To shew forth the glory of the sons of God. We are the ones, we lost the glory. We fall short of the glory. But the creation itself is not happy now. Creation itself is waiting for the glory of the sons of God. So we will again go back to what the glory we lost through our Lord Jesus Christ. There is an end um, for everything, right? So this, what it says is what we teach is that Jesus Christ will return to receive the church, his body, unto himself at the rapture and returning with his church in glory and we will establish millennium millennial kingdom on earth is it it's clear right <laughs> so here what we teach is return will be it's a sudden it's a personal it's visible and it's bodily return of our lord jesus christ in according to maths 24 40 4, 24 and 44 verse, it says, time which you think not. We don't even know what time our Lord Jesus Christ will come. And also in 2 Peter 3, 10, the day of the Lord comes like a thief. If anyone knows uh, when the thief comes, nobody knows. In John's Gospel 14, 3, I will come again, our Lord Jesus Christ says, and Take it to myself. In 1 John 3, 2, we shall see him as he is. In 1 Thessalonians 4, 16, Lord himself will come down. What we teach is our Lord Jesus Christ will come. But that will be a sudden. It won't be like um, God, some date. We won't give any date when Lord Jesus Christ will come. It will be sudden. And it's a personal the way how our Lord Jesus Christ went, it will, he will come like personal. And also it's visible. And he will come bodily, written of our Lord Jesus Christ. What we teach is we must long for the return of our Lord Jesus Christ. Right? In Revelation 22, 20, how many people... Remember, this verse was taught by a couple of, uh, a couple of all night prayers by our brother, right? So what is, it's the smallest prayer. What is that prayer? Even so, come, Lord Jesus, come back, Lord. When our Lord Jesus Christ, um, let's see that verse. If someone has, can you read? Thank you, sister. So what we teach is um, our Lord Jesus Christ, the earlier verses we saw, he'll be coming, right? He's coming sudden, and then he'll be coming personal. We know that he's coming back. What should be our prayer? Our prayer should be, come Lord Jesus Christ. That means we need to prepare for the sudden appearance, like a thief comes. Our Lord Jesus comes like a thief. And also in Titus 2, 12 to 13, it says, We must live a sober life. We must live an upright and godly in this world. Because what we teach is we are waiting for the blessed hope. And also in Philippians 3, 20, We are citizens of the heaven. We must eagerly wait for our Savior. 
we are not belong to this world. What we teach is we are not belong to this world. We are belong to the heaven. And also in 1 Corinthians 16, 22, what it says, Maranatha, it, it ends with. That means, come Lord. In 1 John 5, 19, when we are in God, we understand the wickedness of the world. When we are in this world, if you are in God, you will understand this world is a wicked world. In Matthew 25, 21, uh, the parable of talents, when the first servant comes with double the talents, five, five talents he got, and he got back with ten talents, what the master said, well done, my servant. What we teach is, here is, whatever the God's gift gave it to you, whatever the talents God gave it to you, God, what we teach is you need to multiply. You need to multiply for the God's glory. God should say, well done, my servant. You're faithful to me in this world. That's what we teach. Um, and also, what we don't know when the Christ will come. We don't preach that um, Christ will come at some time. We don't know when he comes. So according to Matthew 24, 44, we just saw time which you think our we, we don't know when he comes. And also in Matthew 25, 13, watch, can someone read that? Watch for the coming of Christ. Let's see. Matthew 25, 13. Thank you, sister. 25, 13. Yes. Um, neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. So what we teach is we need to be watchful in our living life. We don't know when our Lord Jesus Christ will come. In Matthew 13, no one know except the Father. Right? We don't know. Only the Father. The Father knows um, when our Lord Jesus Christ will come back. So you need to be, uh, what we teach is, you know, we don't know the time when our Lord Jesus Christ comes. Um, you need to be ready. There's a question for all of us. What will happen if Christ comes next month? This is a question for all. What will happen? First of all, everybody will quit their job, right? Who will work? And the second thing, everybody will sleep, like um, in Bible study, Joel Brother was saying, you know, the fasting and then sleeping, right? So when, when you know that our Lord Jesus Christ will come next month, you will take out from your school, schools. They won't read, right? Schools, can someone study schools? No. In one month, what they will do? All the public schools will be empty, right? They'll call their kids and they'll ask them to stay at home. Um, what will happen is when um, what will happen is when we know that when Lord Jesus Christ comes, like in like a month's time, so people will be thinking that um, you know Lord will come and they don't do anything. What is the drawback out of that? There is no evangelism. No one will preach gospel. Everyone will think that they want to get ready, you know, they'll stay home, get ready, sit tight, cozy, and then wait. So that's what um, will happen. That's why we don't teach when our Lord Jesus will come. And also, our God is so graciously um, giving us, you know, what are the signs? There are some signs uh, you can predict that when Lord Jesus Christ will come. So in Mark 13, 10, it says, gospel must be preached to all the nations. And also, as you see, right, you know, the gospel is preaching all the nations now. Everywhere, if you open the TV channel, it's uh, hundreds of channels, thousands of channels, you can see, you know, gospel is everywhere, every uh, village and everywhere gospel is going. And if you see on Mark 13, 7 and 8, wars, wars, nations rise against nations. Is it happening now? Yes, everybody will say Russia is uh, invading Ukraine. 
So that's a war. And also, as uh, Matthew 24, 15 to 20, there will be a tribulations. And also, um, in Mark 13, 22, there will be some false prophets will come. Right, you know, how many false prophets now? They will do wonders to seduce the people, whoever is coming, you know, they will sprinkle the water and they'll say you are healed, you know. You'll get this, you'll get that. How many false preachers we see, right? And also, as per Mark uh, 13 and 24, there are some signs in heaven, like, you know, moon will, will not uh, give light and stars will fall. Those are the signs. And also in Romans 11, 12, salvation of Israel. In Romans 11, 12, what it says is, you know, um, because of their hard-heartedness, um, God let Gentiles to his kingdom, right? How much more blessing, you know, if the Gentile riches uh, will be for the Israel? If you read that verse, right, um, um, there, there are some signs um, God is giving us um, or when our Lord Jesus Christ will come. If you, if you read all these signs, um, is happening now. So it means our Lord Jesus coming is very soon. We don't know when he will come. We don't preach that God will come at this time. We teach that you know God will come in a, uh, like a thief. And then when he will come and what time, we don't know. But what we teach is there are some signs which predicts our Lord Jesus Christ's return is sooner. So these all signs um, says that, you know, we are really in a, um, we are really near to our Lord Jesus Christ's return. What we also teach is um, there will be a millennial kingdom on the earth. If someone read um, what happens in Acts 1, 9 and 11. Is that me going fast or I want to just go a little fast so that okay. so, um, Acts 1, 9 to 11. Thank you, sister. Eri tiga esse provaru parlokan kelleru. Aderi tiga ayna tirigi rana innar. When he comes, he will establish his kingdom. That is the millennial kingdom on this earth. In uh, First Thessalonians uh, four thirteen to eight, you can read it later. What it says is the dead will raise first, and. Um, the, whoever is alive will caught up onto the hair. Or Lord Jesus Christ, when he is coming from the heaven, he will be on the air. When he comes, he will come with all the people who are who are dead. They raise first, and then he'll be on the air. And if you are alive, let's say tomorrow, if Lord Jesus Christ comes, you know, or Lord Jesus Christ will be on the mid air with all the people dead in Christ, and then we will caught up with them. That's what. Um, it says, and also in Revelation 22, it says, uh, it's a clear, if you see Revelation 20th chapter, you know, it clearly expi explains there is a millennial kingdom. So in that thousand years, Satan will bound. There won't be any Satan. There won't be any um, sin in this world. And if you see on Revelation 24 to 5, we along with Christ will reign per thousand years. That's what we teach. If you have a doubt, like, you know, how, what is the scriptural evidence that, you know, what kind of life um, we live in this millennial kingdom? If you see on millennium um, kingdom, in Isaiah 11, 6 to 9, we are not dwelling much on that. You will see a different kind of life, right? The wolves dwell with lamb. The leopard plays with kids. 
right? There are so many things, you know, you can read it later, you know, definitely that shows um, how this world will be when there is a millennial kingdom. And also in Isaiah 65, 20, um, Isaiah 11, 10 to 11, his, his dwelling, um, yeah. So God, God will, our Lord Jesus Christ will dwell with us. And also in Psalm 73, 8 to 14, um, Solomon, this Psalm was written by Solomon. He predicts that um, how the reign of our Messiah, you can read later um, how, um, you know, these things are very um, helpful if you can read. In the history, like from the generations, right, what happens is, you know, people have different opinions about millennial kingdom. Majorly, there are three um, views on that, how the millennial kingdom will be. I gave you this image. I just gave that white throne uh, image because so that it will stay in our heart. So there will be three types of uh, kingdoms, millennial kingdoms. Is it visible to all? I'm going from bottom to top. So one is called amillennialism. So what it means is the millennial king, whatever we are living as of now, if you see this, this is the first coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and the work of cross. And uh, this is the remaining part, you know. There is a final judgment, last judgment on the, on the last lines, right? In between, there are three different opinions. Semillennialism means um, whatever we are living in this world is now is in millennium. That's what they believe. Because gospel goes and spreads. Um, and then, you know, literally, you know, over the period, um, we will be living like, you know, our Christ is reigning on us. That's what they believe. post millennialism means, you know, um, after the cross, we all are saved. Gospel goes uh, so much in this world. People keep converting themselves. You know, nations will convert. People will convert. What will happen is 90% um, of Christians and 10% of non-believers. So uh, when it is 90%, what will happen? All the rulers, all the kings, everyone will be believer. And then uh, the king, every, you know, all of them follows the rules, you know, the commandments of God. That itself looks like a millennium. You, you understand that, right? Post-millennial. So there is no specific millennial period. What they believe is, you know, the believers, um, the redeemed people will dominate this world for a long period. That will become a millennium. That's what the post-millennium means. There are two types of um, pre-tribulational, dispensational, pre-millennium, and then post-tribulational, pre-millennium. So if you see... Actually, that's only one, but it's divided into two. So first, what happens is here in this, um, so we, God redeemed everyone. And then if you see there, right, believers will be resurrected. That's what in First Thessalonians we saw. And what happens is um, when we risen, when our Lord Jesus Christ is on the earth, uh, on the air, so whoever is dead in Christ, they'll be raised up and caught up. And we will, if you are alive, you will also caught up in the air. And we will be out of this um, earth. And then there will be seven years of tribulations. On that seven years of tribulations, uh, we won't be here. And then after seven years, we will all come back to this earth along with our Lord Jesus Christ. And then we will rule the earth. That is thousand years. Now, there is another thousand years we will rule and then we will go to final judgment. On the final judgment what will happen? The unbelievers who are dead, they will rise up and then um, there is a judgment. That's a white throne judgment and then there will be, there will be you know on, after that there will be renewed earth and everything and also if you see the La, the topmost one, uh, in that there is no tribulations. You know, their their view is, you know, our Lord Jesus Christ will come back, and then you know He will be on the 
air and we will also caught up and immediately will come down and then we will live in this world for thousand years along with our Lord Jesus Christ. I hope um, I explained it. <laughs> so what we teach is there is a millennial kingdom, right? There are three different opinions, but this doesn't matter to us. What I'm trying to say is we will be there on the millennial kingdom, but how the millennial kingdom will be, we don't worry about. We don't teach that, you know, this is a specific millennial kingdom we go, but we are more, you know, worried about the last and final judgment. Definitely we will be with our Lord Jesus Christ and we will rule this world in the millennial kingdom along with our Lord Jesus Christ. There will be a life which mentioned in Isaiah 11 that will be there. But how these three historical opinions, um, we, we believe that there is a millennial kingdom but um, we are more focused on the final judgment. Right? We will enjoy the millennial kingdom. But, and also, if you come to the final, oh, there will be, it's, it's gone, it's went up, but I'll, I'll read that. Jesus Christ is the one through God will judge all mankind, according to John 5, 22 to 23. So, Father gave all the authority to our Lord Jesus Christ to judge to judge all. So, what are the scriptural evidences, right? You know, final, the last um, judgment. There is scriptural, scriptural evidence um, in Revelation 20, 11 to 15. Um, we may not read because, you know, for the lack of time. So, both believers and unbelievers stand in front of judgment seat. There will be a book of life. If your name is on the book of life, you will go to eternity. When you see the other slide, um, you see, right, after the final judgment, you will go to eternity. If your name is not on that, um, um, if your name is not on the book of life, you will go to eternal hell. So what we teach is um, there will be a judgment on that day there will be a white throne judgment. If you read on Revelation 20, 11 to 15, there will be a white throne judgment. On that judgment, so God will judge everyone. And also, God will see if your name is not in the book of life, you will be going to the eternal hell. If you see on um, Acts 17, 30 to 31, Maybe we can read that verse, Acts 17. Thank you, sister. There is an, a day appointed to judge the world. God, once upon a time, you know, he winked. And but now he's not like that. He's waiting. Um, what it says, you know, there is an appointed day to judge the people. God gave enough time. If you're not a born again, if you're still living in sin, there is a reminder uh, this verse says, there is an appointed day, God will judge. We don't know when our Lord Jesus Christ will come back. So this is a reminder that we should not take uh, oh, God's grace as um, like a take it easy. God's grace, um, sometimes, you know, we will lose the grace of God also, you know, if you keep sinning. If you also see um, in Romans 2, 5, it says, if you are piling up the wrath, to the judgment day, you know, sometimes we keep postponing um, to confess in front of God. So there is a danger that, you know, if you keep piling up the wrath on the judgment day, 
you will have more punishment. And also, there are many passages that talks about, um, you know, Jesus Christ um, reigning, and the final judgment is to our Lord Jesus Christ. Who all will be judged? You know, in 2 Timothy 4, 1, it says, judges living and dead. So definitely believers also will be judged. How they judge, you know, in Romans 10, 10, it says, so there are some indications that, you know, if you're a believer, you know, if you're judging your fellow believe, fellow brethren, and then you're looking down at your brothers or, you know, your sisters. So there is a day, on that day, you have to answer to God. And also in Romans 10, 12, it says, it's a personal account. You can't say that my wife did, so I did. It's not like that. It's your personal account. Or your brother did, or your church did. Um, so that's why it's not like that. It's all about your personal. And also in First Corinthians 3, 10 to 15, that we song, we sang the song, Kalam Samipam. So what happens? The fire will test whatever you're building in this world. Is your works is really um, tested? When God tests our faith, when God tests uh, what we accumulated in this world with the fire, can with the fire. Can we stand? That's another um, um, judgment day. As a believer, you should always think about that. And also in 2 Corinthians 5.10, it says, um, you know, uh, that's why I kept the comments. All must stand before judgment. For what? All we did. So there is an account we have to give in front of God what all we did in this world, how we are doing things, these are all will be accounted on the judgment day. And also there is a judgment for unbelievers also. According to Revelation 20, 12, 13, the dead, great and small, whoever it is, you know, all will be judged on the final judgment. And after the millennial kingdom, we saw that earlier slide, right? And also in Luke 12, it says, there are some degree of punishment for unbelievers. Uh, we don't have to deal much, but I think if you do more sins, you'll be punished more for unbelievers. That's what the, um, this parable says. And also on Matthew 12, for if 12 and 36, for every idle word you speak, you shall give an account on judgment day. This applies to I feel like it, this applies to believers as well as non-believers. Every ideal word, every vain word, uh, sometimes we loosely use some words. We have to give an account of that. God is reminding, there is a judgment day. Uh, you have to answer for what all you are doing in this world. And also, um, Ecclesiastes 12, uh, 14 says, God will bring every deed into the punishment. There was a judgment, um, what we teach is the for the final judgment, you have to be ready. And also, whoever is alive, let's say if Lord Jesus Christ comes in the night, tonight, right? Uh, that means we are all alive. Let's say that example. In uh, Matthew 25, 31 to 46, um, if, you, if you, you can read on that verse, um, you know, um, the sheep will be taken to the right hand and the goats will go on to left side and then um, God will punish. That means, you know, whoever is alive, God will divide his people and the, um, and the people who are not believing or Christ and God will judge there. Who are alive also will be judged. That's what I'm trying to say. And also, angels will be judged. Second Peter 2.14 um, and also, we will help in the work of judgment. So most of the people are excited for this um, because we will help in the judgment uh, process along with our Lord Jesus Christ. What it may be is, you know, um, some commentary, we will be watching the judgments from our Christ. Maybe our Christ is there. He's judging the people. Maybe he will take your approval. You think what kind of punishment give it to them or something like that? Maybe that's what. Um, um, but sorry, oh, something like that, jury. 
We have to go, I think, right? You can't miss them if you got a letter. So after final last judgments, what happens is believers enter into the full enjoyment of life in the presence of God forever. Right after the final judgment, um, our Lord Jesus Christ, he will be on the white throne. He will be judging because God the Father gave all the authority to our Lord Jesus Christ to judge everyone. And we will be helping them. Even the fallen angels will also be judged on that day. And the new heaven and the new earth, so everything is, the whole creation will be renewed. And we live with God. What is the kingdom? Right, you know, in Matthew 25, 34, Christ inherited the kingdom prepared before the foundations of the earth. And also in Revelation 22, 3, that kingdom, there's no curse because Christ will be on the throne. This is all about the last judgment. And uh, Isaiah 65, 17, it says, Behold, I create a new heaven and earth. Revelation 21, 1, it says, John saw the vision of new heaven and earth. Revelation 21, 2, there's be a new holy city and uh, new Jerusalem coming down from heaven. These are all the indications that, you know, the kingdom will be with um, new heaven and new earth. Our Lord Jesus Christ, let's, um, you know, what do you say, like, uh, glo you want to then? Like, um, our Lord Jesus Christ, he's a mediator between God and man, as per 1 Timothy 2.5. He's the head of the body of the church. Of church and uh, he's the coming universal king, reign, the throne of David, as per those verses, Isaiah 9.6. And uh, Luke 1, 30 and 30, 1 to 33. And he is the final judge. Matthew 25, 14 to 46. There's so many verses. Um, we are not reading much, but um, I can send slides if anyone wants to read. But these are all the verses. We don't have much time. So what is heaven? Right? Um, everyone, heaven is... Uh, from last two months, heaven is dwelling in our places, you know, from the winter outing, right? <laughs> what is heaven? It's, yes, where God dwells. That's the first thing, right? In Matthew 6, 9, these are all scriptural references. It says, heaven is my throne, Isaiah 66, 1. In Matthew 6, 9, our Father, which are? In heaven, this is the prayer. In First Peter three twenty two, Christ is gone into heaven. So, what is there in heaven? First of all, God's presence will be there, and God's glory will be there, and there will be angels, and then heavenly creatures, and also the redeemed people, you and me, will worship the Father along with everyone there. That's the heaven. See, God, we lost the glory. We come short of the glory. God created for His glory. And then God sent His own Son for us, and He connected back to Him. Having faith in our Lord Jesus Christ, He, he gave the glory back, right? Heaven is a place, by the way. It's not some imagination or it's not like some certain state in your mind. Uh, like, you know, maybe, you know, some people say, I'm, I feel like I'm in heaven, right? Some people will say. Maybe if they go for some vacation or something, they'll say, I feel like in, it's not, right, you know, it's a place. In Luke 21, 51, it says, Carried to heaven, our Lord Jesus Christ. In, in, in uh, Acts 1.11, he ascended to heaven. And Stephen saw, um, before he died, 
where is our Lord Jesus Christ? He saw the glimpse of heaven. And, you know, in Revelation 21, 22 to 26, um, we'll read. I think we have a couple of minutes. Revelation 21. Thank you, sister. See, see, the amazing thing is there is no night in that. So heaven is always day. Um, so there is no closing of the doors. And also, Janamulu dhani velugunandhi sancharinthuru bhoorajalu tamma mahimanu dhani lo niki tiskunu vaduru. Just the heaven. Devini Mahimaye Danilo Lord Jesus Christ is the light. Right? That's the heaven. This is the glimpse of heaven. So heaven is a place. It's not an imaginary thing. It's not a, a concept or it's not a state of your mind. It's a place. It's a physical place. We will be there after the final judgment what we teach is you know we will go there and we will live along with the father along with our god and along with our lord jesus christ see what we teach is um, all these things is a great motivation for a believer right in second peter 3 11 to 13 it says all these things will be dissolved. The present earth, the present, um, you know, whatever you own or whatever you establish in this world, all will be dissolved. All the earth, everything will be dissolved. Right? In Matthew 6, 19 to 21, it says, Lay not treasure on earth, lay on heaven. So this is the motivation when we live in this world. What we teach is, don't lay your treasure on this earth. Right? Sometimes we try to lay our treasures on this earth. Lay treasures on the heaven. If you have time at home, you can read Revelation 21 and 22. Gives the description of heaven. How the heaven looks like. In 21.2, it says it's a holy city. In 21.4, it says there's no more pain. There's no more death. There is no more mourning on that place. And Revelation 22, 3, it says, it's a throne of God. The throne of God, our Lord Jesus Christ, will be seated there. In Psalm 73, 25, 20 to 26, let's, um, can someone read that? Psalm 73. Twenty five and twenty six. Thank you, my sister. See, whom have I in heaven but thee, right? In Akashamandu, Niv Tappa, Nakavaruna. This is a great motivation for a believer. Right? You know, when our God is in heaven, when we know that you know, after our final judgment, um, after we test it, we'll be going there. We'll live with him. And it says, In English it says, My flesh and my heart faileth, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. See, even the flesh and my under heart fail, but God is the strength of my heart. Our God is the only strength. See, how we can get motivation? 
in this world to live for God is, you know, you have to think like this world will get dissolved and then don't lay any treasure on this earth. There is a greater uh, place which we are going to be. That's what we teach in this um, church. In Revelation 4.8, um, this is the last slide. Um, so more, most of the people were happy. <laughs> Revelation 4, 8, can someone read? Thank you, sister. That's how the heaven will be. Right, you know, and the four bees had each of them six wings about him. And what they are saying, rest not day and night. And saying, holy, holy, holy Lord, God Almighty, which was and is and is to come. Right? Bhuta Vartamana Bhavishyat Kala Unde, Sarvadikari and Devudu. Prabhu Devudu, Devudu, Prabhu, Parishudu, Parishudu, Parishudu. Ani Manaka Ratri Magalu Chapachunu. We teach um, this will be the end of uh, our lives. Uh, I don't know how many got it, but uh, <laughs> this is the end of life, you know. Um, our Lord Jesus Christ will come. If you are alive, you will caught up into the air. If you are dead, you will be risen ahead of uh, who are the living people. And Christ will come. And then there will be a millennial kingdom where Satan will go into some other place. There won't be any Satan's presence in this. And after the thousand years millennial kingdom, there will be a final and last judgment. On that judgment, your works will be tested. Whatever you talk, in Matthew it says, you know, whatever we say, that will be judged by the God. So we should be, you know, living a life and, and the glimpse of heaven motivates us how to live for God. Because our, as um, Colossians 1.3, it says, we should always look upward to God and um, look for uh, the things to come. That's the consummation. Ascension and consummation, these two um, we teach in this church. Um, I hope... Uh, I was faithful to the text uh, the leadership uh, <laughs> is created. Uh, let's pray. Prem Krupa Kanakram Gal Pallavak Tandri Prava Santri Kalsa Mila Prava Meeru Prava Ichina Neku Akyan Kevan Rastu Uttral Challenge Kundam Prava Prava Meeru Prava Parlokan Ki Kunpo Padar Prava Tirmir Tirigirana Innar Prava Mamalni Prava Meeru Tirigi Tis Kunveli Prava I can win the way and leper palamita part of Prava, me muntamani. I can irishan canic on the last two trial challenge kunam. Prava, mioka, Prava, Ika, Tirpudinam, Kosam, Prava, me within a sit the paralno, Prava, mid yapkin jason and kunanad, Mamal yapkin jeskundi, Prava, Mabalhina, Prava, Sheri Ralu, Mabalhina, Manasilni, Miasta lepertna, Saha and the Echene, Prava, Mioka, Prava, Parlokan ki, Prava, me. Either choose to Makanul Prava, Pudu Prava, Mirak choose everything on Tanik Saha in the Chandi, Prava Sangamga Prava, Mimandramu Prava, Nioka, Wakan Saranga Jin Stanki, Kals and Shakthani Prava, Mid Daicham and Isanidla Vedkunam Prava, Makurke Prava, Mirsid the Persina, Aika Pronicha Jim K on the Nalu, Prava, Okanad Mita Untamane, Aika Kopanirishan Kani Konras, Totral Challenge Kunam Prava, On Prava, there's no corruption, Lord. There is no pain, there is no suffering. Prava, Aika, Nirikshana, Prava, Enta Gopadini, Prava, Aika, Nirikshana, Erla, Prava, Maika, Drusti, Prava, Petri, Jivinshtan, Saha, and Dai Chain, Prava, Mirmata, Unnand, Kondanalu, Prava, Isamilo, Prava, Mandra, Makarli, Mutani, Sanit, Kustnam, Isamilo, Prava, or Prashad, Uncle Nyap, Kanyas, Kondi, Prava, Uncle Prava, Nyastala, Pertnam, Prava, Enta, Gano, Pain and Suffering, Slow, Prava, Uncle Prava, Naru, Prava, Nyoka Gai Panastam to Uncle Mutandi, Prava Mire Prava, Nyoka Wisdom Dai Chandi, Prava 
మీలో ప్రవా ఆనందించగలగటానికి ప్రవా అంకులకు కావాల్సిన ఆ యొక్క ఆత్మను ప్రభా మీ దయచేయమని సన్నిధిలో వేడుకుంటున్నాను ప్రజలు ఆయన కూడా జ్ఞాపకం చేసుకుని ప్రవా ప్రవా అంకులకు పరిచయం చేస్తుంటుండగా ప్రవా నీ బిడ్డకు కావాల్సిన ప్రవా శక్తిని ప్రవా విజ్డమ్ని దయచేయమని సన్నిధిలో వేడుకుంటున్నాం ఒకసారి ప్రభు ఈ సాయంత్రకాల సమయంలో ప్రభు మీరు ఇచ్చిన ఎక్కువ గొప్ప సమయానికే వందనాలు చెల్లించుకుంటూ మా యొక్క ప్రభా రెస్ట్ ఆఫ్ ద వీక్ అంతటిని ప్రభా నీ హస్తాల్లో పెట్టుకుంటూ ప్రభా నీ కొరక జీవించడానికి కావాల్సిన కృపను దయచేయమని ఇచ్చిన ప్రార్థన మరక్షకుడు అనేసి క్రిస్తున్నాములు అడిగి పెడుకున్నాను తండ్రి